Well, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's Holly with Colorful Crafting, and it is that time again. Time for a whip and chat. I've actually wanted to do one of these for a couple of days, but to be quite honest with you, I've just been too exhausted. This has been this has been a week, people. This has been a week. Um, the only good thing about having a really rough week is that it gives me plenty to talk about <laughs> during the video. Um, and I have all these tags that I want to get to, but, um, you know, either I forget to print them out or I forget to bring my, my, um, tablet with me when I come up here to do these videos. But anyway, I am filming this on, um, April 26th, which is a Friday. Um, once again, Thursdays, I do a double shift. I work a regular shift until one o'clock in the afternoon, and then I go back in at midnight and work all night. So I am a little bit tired, <laughs> bordering on loopy right now. So as I did last week when I, I believe I was doing an unboxing last Friday, um, I just forgive me in advance if I sound if I start like rambling and jumping from one subject to another it's just one of those things um, um, and I don't know when I I've been doing this for three and a half years and I'm not used to it by any stretch of the imagination I don't think I will ever be used to um, this stupid double shift um, but I tend to try and stay awake when I get off work well, first of all, I normally wouldn't be able to sleep because um, I'm not one for naps, um, especially during the day. Um, so, but even if I was able to fall asleep, it would only mess up my sleeping for tonight. So I usually try and stay awake and then maybe go to sleep slightly earlier. So here we are. Um, yeah. So, I hope everyone's having a nice week. I'm sure everybody is ready for the weekend. My weekend doesn't officially start until I get off work tomorrow. But I am very much looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> so, before we get started, I actually wanted to ask you guys, did any of you manage to grab one of the Jessica Rabbit um, kits from Diamond Art Club for the five minutes they were on sale? before they sold out because I got the email but by the time I clicked on the link it was already sold out um, I wasn't too upset I mean it's gorgeous and I would love to have it but I'm just glad that when they had when they released their new stuff that mama knows best or mama knows whatever it's called was available because that's the one that I really really wanted and uh I'm just now starting to see some people unboxing uh, the Jessica Rabbit. It's I'm I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. I think that's what it's called. And I watched Stitcherista do her unboxing. I know I, I I think I mentioned her in every video, but she's my favorite YouTuber, and she is pretty much the reason why I decided to uh, make this YouTube channel. But yeah, I watched her unboxing of it, and oh my god, she was so funny. <laughs> she squealed like a little girl on Christmas morning. It was so entertaining. So, I mean, I'm going to eventually try and get it, but I wasn't, like, desperate to get it like I was with um, the uh, Mama Knows. And actually, on May 7th, I'm just sitting here. I haven't even started diamond painting yet. <laughs> Uh, and on May 7th, they're supposed to be releasing some more new stuff so that the Jessica Rabbit one might be available then. But the other one that I'm really, really, really hoping that I can get is the one that they sort of teased, Mandy Manzano teased it, I think last week. It's called All Good Dogs Go to Heaven. It's so, it's just beautiful. And, uh... Yeah, kind of like how I miss you. Her uh, her 
painting, I Miss You, reminds me of my dad. This one, um, All Good Dogs Go to Heaven, reminds me of the last dog that I had before moving in with roommate Tom. So I really want to get that one. Because there's nothing like being emo as your diamond painting. Okay, so I also, I put this here so I would remember to say something. I got this last week. I actually filmed a very short unboxing of it, which I have not yet uploaded. But this was from um, Diamond Painting with Donnie, and I love it. I have been using it constantly since I got it. It's just, it feels really good holding it. My hand doesn't get crampy or anything like that. So thank you very much, Donnie. I don't know if you are watching this, but thank you anyway. Okay, so. As you can see, I've made quite a bit of progress on this, and I'm hoping, really hoping, that um, I might actually be able to finish this week, because I did quite a bit over the last week, because what I do usually when I come home from work is I go and I sit on the back deck with roommate Tom, and I diamond paint until dinner, and then I diamond paint for like another hour before I go to bed. So that's how I was able to uh, get so much of this done. And I have to say that I've had a really great time doing this one, with the exception of yesterday, which I did this whole black, dark, navy blue section. That was not fun. I still have a little part here that I'm going to do right now. But yeah, this was not fun, and it had, really had nothing to do with the fact that it was all black. And uh, I have this sitting on my, uh, my lap desk. And I'm not using my uh, my light pad today because I'm sitting in front of the window so there's enough light and also the plug for this one because I'm... Do you guys have... What size light box do you use? Because I have an A4 which is what I used when I first started diamond painting but then I upgraded to this one which is the A3 and it's the entire width of this canvas and I love it. The only bummer is that it's uh, you have to plug it into the wall, so it's not as portable as the other one. So anyway, part of the reason why I'm not using it is because the plug is on the other side, and I'm too lazy to flip everything around. <laughs> but um, the part of the reason that this was such a bummer yesterday was because I've been having a lot of trouble with the drills, just the black drills, just the three tens. They're super super staticky. And I don't know what happened. I used two bags of the 310s and they were fine. But the last two bags, or the last bag that I've been using, has just been a nightmare. These right here are not quite as staticky as they were the last couple days. But they were awful. And, like, you know, I didn't think to put the, um, the fabric sheet in the containers when I was kitting this up. Because my first diamond painting I had no static problems whatsoever. But, uh, yeah, and I've also had a lot of, um... A lot of trash with this which is odd because every time you listen to people talk about diamond art kits they always talk about how they're they have the best drills and so I've I've had quite a few issues with this but I'm still enjoying myself quite a bit so um, let's see yeah nine minutes into the video and I'm just starting to diamond paint now um, <laughs> okay so like I said, let me know if any of you were able to grab one of the Jessica Rabbit kits off of Diamond Art Club. I would be really interested to know how fast they sold out because I think I got my email at like 7.30 at night and I'm not exactly sure how long it took me to see it and go to the site, but it couldn't have been more than... It had to have been less than an hour, um, and it was already gone. I know I, I was reading people on Facebook saying, oh, I had it in my cart, and I was going to pay for it, and then the next thing I know, it was sold out. I didn't even get to that part. It was just sold out. So, my week hasn't been the best. That's part of the reason why I wasn't able to come on and do a whip and chat because I really wanted to because already, even though I just started my channel, I feel like this is kind of like therapy for me. 
um, it gives me an excuse to talk to myself <laughs> without feeling like I'm crazy. But yeah, it's been a really rough week. So strap in, people. Grab your uh, project, your diamond painting, or your crochet project, or whatever you happen to be working on, and get ready to listen to The Adventures of Holly. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I mean, nothing monumental happened. It was just like a series of really frustrating days. And in fact, I belong to quite a few diamond painting clubs or pages on Facebook. And I said the other day, thank God for diamond painting. Because honestly, that has been the only thing that's kept me somewhat sane the past week. Because I would go to work and I would have this absolutely terrible day. Like, horrible day. And then I would come home and I'd be able to sit and like I said, diamond paint for a little while before dinner, then diamond paint a little bit before going to bed. And it calmed me down. It kept me from completely having some kind of anxiety attack. And I don't know what I would have done in its place if I didn't have diamond painting. So I might be a newbie. I'm still very much a newbie, but I'm extremely grateful to have found this hobby. Uh, plus, it's another way to justify all the money I have spent on diamond or on diamond paintings. Um, yeah. So, last week, last Thursday, and I promise every time I do this, I won't keep repeating myself. Um, I hope, <laughs> but. Thursdays. I do my overnight shift, so I hate Thursdays. Thursdays are no bueno for Holly. Um, so I usually, we usually have dinner a little earlier than normal. And then our, we have, we're like, like I, like I've said before, roommate Tom and I are like an old married couple. We have this routine. We have dinner. We usually watch a couple episodes of Frasier before he goes and does what he does at night which is usually sitting down in his man cave with the dog. And then I go upstairs and either diamond paint or read a little bit before going to bed. But on Thursday nights, you know, we try and we do the same things, but we just do it earlier. So we had dinner and we're watching Frasier and uh, he's on his phone, which I can't really say anything because I'm on my phone a lot too, but he's like, attached to his phone 24 hours a day he works from home so he conducts his business a lot on his phone so he has more of an excuse than i do i do it just to kill time and watch videos and stuff like that he's actually being productive so he's on his phone and he looks at me during the episode of fraser and he's like how do you spell detail and i don't think anything of it i just um i tell him and then he's like are you sure it doesn't look right? I said, no, that's, that's how you spell it. And he doesn't say anything for a while. And then, um, the episode of Frasier ends and I'm getting ready to go upstairs to take a shower before laying down. And Tom looks at me and he's like, I think I have a migraine. And I said, you think you have a migraine? He said, yeah, I can see in the middle, but I can't see on either side. I can only see in the middle. I'm like, what? You have tunnel vision? And he's like, yeah, it's a migraine. And I said, well, does your head hurt? And he said, not really. I can't remember if he said no or not really. And, uh... So anyway, I, I, I started to worry about him. And he, of course, thought I was overreacting. These damn drills! Oh, they're so fucked up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I've been trying really hard not to curse on this channel. Um, but it, it, I, I'm not going to lie. It will slip out every once in a while. So you're going to have to bear with me here. These drills. I really think I messed them up. I don't know. They look like there's... It actually looks like 
I have too many on the canvas. All right, anyway, sorry about that. Um, it's my OCD tendencies, I tell you. Um, so I get upset because I'm a worry wart and any mention of like your eyes or something, of course you're gonna get like nervous and I have never had tunnel vision myself, but I can't imagine it happening and then just being like really blase about it. So of course my worry wart brain automatically thinks, oh my God, he's having a stroke or he's gonna have a heart attack or something. Um, he's going blind. <laughs> Yes, I am that dramatic in my head. Um, so I ask him, I, I'm like, do you want to go to the hospital? I will take you to the hospital. Do you want me to call 911? He's like, no, I'm fine. It's fine. And so I didn't even want to go upstairs because I was worried. And he goes on the back deck and he sits. And I'm like, are you sure you don't want to go to the doctor? And he's like, no, I'll be fine. And so I spent, I didn't get any rest that night. I spent most of my night worrying about him. But thankfully, maybe like a couple hours later, he said his vision was back to normal. He was fine. So I relaxed somewhat. And then when I was at work that night, I texted him because he gets up very early because of the dog, mostly. Actually, I think that was left over from when he was taking care of his mom, because his mom used to get up really early. But, um, so I texted him in the middle of the night, basically, and asked him how he was. And he responded, I'm fine. Vision is normal. I had an ocular migraine. I've never heard of an ocular migraine. But evidently, he had one when he was in the Guard, because he was in the, the um, National Guard for many years. So he tells me he had one like 30 years ago and I'm like, you re and it was the only one he ever had. And I'm like, you remember the symptoms for this ocular migraine from 30 years ago. <sighs> He's such a strange duck, but yeah, he, he said that's what it was. And thankfully since then, he hasn't had any more problems, but it was very scary because, you know, I've lived with Tom now for five years, going on six. So he's, basically he's my family. He's pretty much the only family that I have left. And uh, I don't know. I think part of the reason why I was so worried about him was I kind of had a flash to uh, my dad when I was taking care of my dad. Any and every little thing that would happen with him, I would panic and think it was something far more serious than it ever ended up being. And I don't know, that was like the first time that anything like that's happened where I kind of felt almost the same way as I did when I was with my dad. So, yeah. So needless to say, that night was not fun at work because even though he told me that his vision was normal, I was still worried. But then I don't really need that much of a reason to worry about something because that's just in my nature. That's what happens when you are the daughter of two warriors. So yeah. Anyway, um, new topic. <laughs> I will tell you about the rest of my crappy week. But um, did any of you see that um, Dreamer Designs had a buy one get one free sale over the weekend for Easter? And if you did, did you get anything? I gotta admit, Part of the reason I was curious and tempted was because of all the drama that's been going on with their company. Um, if you're not aware of the drama, I'm not going to get into it here, but needless to say, there it's, it's kind of a polarizing company. Either there are people who absolutely love it and think they're fantastic. Dreamer Designs is a company that just started in February and they are based um, in America kind of like Diamond Art Club. And uh, 
yeah, so a lot of people either just absolutely love it, think they're fantastic, and then there's people who have had bad experiences with them and think they're terrible. So I will freely admit that I was curious mainly because of everything that I've kind of heard back and forth about the company. And since they're new, they don't really have that many canvases available. I think they only have like maybe 10. Um, but it was buy one, get one free. And um, according to a recent video that I saw, they've recently lowered their, the prices on their canvas canvases. Because I think, don't quote me on this people, I think um, their main like popular canvases that everybody seemed to be getting. I think they were like $55 or something and now they're like 44. I could be completely wrong. So <laughs> believe me, it would not be the first time I need a drink. Hang on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, anyway, so I decided to go for it. Uh, plus, there was also a 10% off coupon. So I got two canvases, I only paid for one, and then I got 10% off the one that I did pay for. So I was pretty excited about that. So I'm excited to, to um, try them out for myself. Uh, yeah, but I have I seem to be having a lot of trouble with um, shipping with diamond paintings because my last shipment from Diamond Art Club took longer than normal because they sent it FedEx and FedEx I don't know about you guys I have more problems getting stuff from FedEx than anybody else even the Postal Service and I thought they were pretty bad but it seems like every single time I've ever gotten anything from FedEx it's taken forever. It never shows up on time. Well, D Dreamer Design sent me my package on Monday through UPS, which is fine. And it's not like I don't have any um, diamond paintings to do. I mean, the Dreamer Design ones will probably, I probably won't get to them for a while. But yeah, it's Friday and I, I looked at the tracking and it, according to the tracking, UPS isn't even going to be delivering me my package until Monday or Tuesday of next week. And that just seems weird. I know it's coming from California, which is on the opposite coast, but it just seems weird that it would take a full week or more to get to me. So, I know we live in the boonies, but not that bad. <laughs> um... Here's another diamond painting question for you lovely people. So do you only work on one diamond painting at a time? Or do you have more than one going? Um, or if you are a multi-crafter, do you work on a diamond painting and then also crochet or stitch or color? Because everything else, all my other hobbies, like all, I only have two other hobbies. <laughs> I have no problem multitasking, like with um, with coloring, which I haven't been coloring in like about a month. And it's not that I like suddenly just don't like coloring anymore. I kind of had a bad experience with some people in the coloring community, which is probably a very... Uh, interesting story for another time. Maybe I'll get into all that, but um, yeah, I, I kind of had a bad experience and it sort of turned me off of coloring for, for now. I'm sure I'll go back to it. Um, yeah, when I was coloring, I, I had no problem working on more than one thing at a time. And with reading, which is my number one hobby that I've been doing since I was a little girl, I have absolutely no problem reading two or three books at the same time and keeping everything straight. But I don't know, with diamond painting, I feel like I only want to be working on one. Having said that, the other day, I did have the idea of when I start my next project, 
I might, because it's big, it's bigger than this one. Um, I might also start on a smaller one um, that I could, it would be easier for me to take upstairs or I could just leave in my bedroom and then work on this when um, I'm downstairs. So we'll see, because I just got a couple smaller canvases, which let me tell you, that was the, my first little bit of China mail drama, which I'll tell you that story in a minute. But um, yeah, so I, I've gotten, I, I was thinking of starting on one of my smaller canvases to be sort of a, ch a, a nice change from the fact that I'm doing big ones and I've pretty much only been getting big ones lately. Uh, yeah, so, so unlike some YouTubers, I am not really well versed in the world of AliExpress. I've only gotten, I would say I have total, including all the Diamond Art Club ones that I have, I, I think I have maybe 30 possibly 30 diamond paintings, um, which sounds like a lot, especially to Rumi Tom, but I would love to have way more than that. But I, uh, when I first started diamond painting, I went a little nuts and I pretty much ordered all of the like 20 <laughs> that I have all at one time. And I didn't know about like checking um, with other people to see if they were a good seller or not. I didn't even really understand that it was all, from all different sellers. I thought AliExpress was like just one place and everything would show up at one time. I didn't realize it was all different stores and everything. So the very, well, actually the second thing that I ordered on AliExpress was these two small um, paintings of elephants. One was like, had a sugar skull face elephant, and then the other elephant has headphones on, and I just thought they were adorable. I've been very into owls and elephants and sloths lately. Um, so anyway, long story short, too late. Um, It never, the tracking, I mean, I've gotten just about everything else that I had ordered, the exception of one thing, which um, I still haven't gotten, but whatever. Um, so I was watching the tracking, and every time I would check the tracking on this package, now I had gotten something else from this same company, it's the store, it's called Home Fun. Um, I got my, uh, and I think I, I showed you in my first China Mail unboxing, and I liked the quality, and I thought they came out really nice. I liked the way they were shipped. They were on a foam roll, and it was a um, uh, Alice in Wonderland, a bigger canvas. Uh, one was Alice in Wonderland with the Cheshire Cat, and then the other one was Alice with, I believe, Snow White sitting in a forest, and I really liked both of them, so I was excited to get my elephants. And they're supposedly shipped at the same time, but in different packages. So anyway, every time I checked the tracking, all it said was arrived at shipping facility, I think shipping warehouse or something. So basically two months, almost going into two months of it just sitting at the warehouse. And I'm thinking, did it, it didn't even leave China. So I started texting or messaging the store which that whole messaging system through AliExpress is very confusing. Um, <laughs> and I told them, I'm like, well, you know, it, it doesn't even show that it left the country yet and it's two months later. Is Can I, you know, get a refund or can you send them, send them back out? And they got like really sort of, I don't want to say defensive, but they, they were not very cordial. And I don't know if it was, it might have been just like a language barrier or something, but they were getting like very upset and they didn't want to 
even check into the tracking. They just kept insisting that the tracking just wasn't updating and that it was going to be here any day. You got to give us more time and blah, blah, blah. And then finally, when it had passed, it had long passed the delivery date that AliExpress gave me for it. I was like, well, you know, either give me a refund or send it out to me again. Either way, I'm just going to have to file a dispute if you're not going to help me. And as soon as I said the word dispute, they like threw a fit. And they're like, please cancel the dispute. And I hadn't even filed the dispute yet at this point. I'm like, you have to be patient. Please be patient. It's coming. <laughs> so finally, I was like, oh, and they would just like message me constantly. And finally, I'm like, you know what, I'll give it another week. If it shows up, fine. If it doesn't, I just won't contact the store directly anymore. I will go strictly through AliExpress. So I canceled the dispute because I did file it because them texting me or messaging me back and forth was like, you know, be patient, be patient, it's coming, it's coming. You Soon you will receive elephant painting. And, <laughs> um, and I finally got it a couple days ago. Haven't opened it yet, I'm kind of nervous because <sighs> the package looks very battered. Um, but yeah. <sighs> Anyway, I am, I am, I am knackered. <laughs> I am freaking tired. Holy crap. Okay, so let's go back to why my week was so terrible. How long have I been talking? Oh my goodness, a half hour already. Okay, um, not that there's any specific length I, I want to make these videos, it's just... I feel like I've been talking a lot, but I haven't really been saying anything, if that makes sense. Um, so, my job, and again, I apologize if it feels like I keep repeating myself, but um, my job is a scan coordinator, um, and I know I've mentioned this because one of my lovely viewers, Rhonda, mentioned that she had the exact same job as me. Um, once upon a time and she is the first time it is the first time that I've actually met someone who understands that my job is stressful which was nice so yeah I, I take care of all the price tags and uh, pricing problems and putting up signs and everything and every week we have an ad change and for us the new ad begins on Friday and um, we had we went through a system conversion back in September. Now, under our old system, I had taggers come in, and they would come in probably like around 6 p.m. at night, and they would stay until 12, which is when the store closes. And when I had my taggers, I had no problem getting people willing to do the tags at night. It was mostly high school kids. Um, Never had a problem. Having them show up was another um, issue, but that's neither here nor there at this point. But when we went through our system conversion back in September, that all changed. Um, because of the way the system is now, and I'm not gonna get all boring and technical, but um, everything has to be done after one in the morning. Because all of the system updates and everything goes through our system after the store closes. And like I said, we close at midnight, so it can't be done before midnight. That was a big problem. And I don't think there's anybody in the entire company now that thinks this is a good way to run a business because nobody wants to work overnight. Um, so when this started, I was lucky to find two people who were willing to do tags for me. And they both did a really good job. Two young kids, um, the boy, we'll call him Johnny, and then there's a girl, we'll call her Mary. <laughs> um, now Mary's been with the company for a long time, and she would always get, and one of the reasons why I thought she would work out is because she would get a full-time position every summer as an overnight person, every year. So everything was going along fine. They worked out really well. 
they're really fast everything would get done because the um, the goal is that everything needs in the store we open at 6 a.m. and everything in the store needs to be completely tagged and signed no later than 8 in the morning which when you stop and think about it is next to impossible because I was in a very good position in having people willing to do tags but there are many stores many 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 stores that are not that fortunate that just do not have even one person to do tags at night so they've been having to um, bring people in in the early morning to put the tags up and that's a big no-no and my boss when she goes into stores that are doing that she's not very happy but she doesn't understand what it's like to work at store level so that's an issue but um anyway I'm rambling again I'm sorry <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I'm taking the long way around this. Um, <laughs> I do have a point. I promise you I have a point. Um, so anyway, um, so I was very fortunate to find two kids that were willing to do it. So basically I come in at midnight. They would, they would come in at midnight as well, and they would work until 8 in the morning. I would usually work that shift, sometimes coming in at 1 and leaving at 9, but usually 12 to 8 is what I work. And I would do the signs. I would make sure all of the batches, which are the price changes, get pushed through the system correctly, deal with any problems, any errors, all that other stuff, which doesn't sound like it would take a long time, but it actually does. And then I would walk the store um, for the signs, get everything completely signed, get everything looking good. So by the time my boss, my store boss shows up, everything's done. And then my backup would come in at like five or six and he would take care of any issues during the day. Um, so what is the sort of fly in the ointment is that if there's any deviation to this, things do not run smoothly. <sighs> Meaning since I just had two people, if one of them needed off, that would mean I would have to put tags up, which would mean the stuff that I'm supposed to be doing doesn't get done until later and the store is not completely 100% by the time they want it to be um, and one of the person people that were doing tags Mary I knew I would be losing her for the summer because like I said she usually always gets the summer position however she, Miss Mary has um, taken to calling out the last month or so which was frustrating and uh, once a month we have what we call heavy week which just means we have more tags than normal because a bunch of different promotions all end at the same time and uh, this was our heavy week and we had even more tags than normal on heavy week because of other stuff that were what was going on so we had a lot of tags and uh, it was basically going to just be me, Mary and Johnny. And Mary called out last week, which wasn't that bad because we had a normal week and Johnny and I were able to get everything done and we still managed to be 100% by the time the store opened. This week we had two and a half times what we had last week and Mary called out again an hour before she was supposed to be at work. I wasn't really surprised because a few days ago I was told that she no longer wanted to do tags. And the part of it, I don't know why I stopped diamond painting. <sighs> the part of it that really upset me was that she didn't even tell me. She told the store manager and he happened to mention it thinking that I already knew, but I didn't. So that really bothered me because I, I just felt like it was being disrespectful um, so I'm like, you know, whatever. I already knew I wasn't going to have her for the summer. So it's just, you know, one more headache for me. But I was really worried about this week because I said to my boss who just went on vacation, I'm like, are you sure she's going to do this week? Because we're really screwed if she doesn't show up. I said, because it's going to be just me and Johnny. And, you know, this is like two and a half times our normal heavy week tag count. This is, it's going to be impossible to get everything done. 
He's like, no, she promised she would never do that, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, I go in last night. Thankfully, I went in a little earlier than I normally do. And they tell me she called out. So, me and Johnny ran our asses off to try and get almost 20,000 tags up in like six hours. And I was not feeling well to begin with. Um, another issue I was having this week um, was anxiety, really bad anxiety. Um, most of it comes from work to begin with, but it was just especially bad this week, I guess. And uh, for those of us who have anxiety, if, if you have anxiety, you, you know that it's not just a feeling. It also affects you physically. And it was affecting me really badly this past week. Um, giving me all kinds of stomach issues and headaches and all that stuff. So I went in feeling like I got run over by a car. I just didn't want to be there. And to top it all off, even before I knew she wasn't there, even before I knew she didn't want to do the job anymore, um, I was just stressed. So I kind of had a, uh, a really bad, almost panic attack at work last night. It just kind of overwhelmed me. Um, and it's kind of a building because when my manager told me that Mary almost said her real name, not that she would ever see this, not that anyone I work with would ever see my videos, but um, yeah, I don't want to use real names, but ever since my manager told me that she didn't want to do it anymore and I realized she didn't even bother to tell me and I knew for a fact that last week when she called out, my backup covered for her and knew she had no intention of coming in. Um, yeah, it just, it bothered me and it was building up and building up. And I keep telling my, my manager, I keep telling him I need help. I cannot be expected to do all of this work by myself. The only day that I get any help is Thursday night. And if you're going to take that away from me too, it's just, it's impossible to do this job by myself. Especially when you have some stores that have, like, some scan coordinators get help every single day by at least one person. I'm lucky that I get any help at all. I'm lucky that I have somebody who can be there on my day off. So it was just very frustrating, and I guess it kind of built up to the point where I just, something had to give. So I kind of had a little bit of a panic attack at work. So <laughs> there I am sitting in the ladies' room at, like, three o'clock this morning just feeling like I'm gonna throw up and and various you know just just not feeling well all around and it, all I wanted to do all I wanted to do was to get in my car and just come back home and go to bed that's all I wanted to do but I persevered I got through it um yeah and uh So that was another reason why this week was not fun. Oh, these are so staticky. The ones yesterday were more staticky, but these aren't great either. So anyway, I actually wanted to do a different color, but I already poured out the black. So black it is. <sighs> anyway, you will find as we continue on, as I continue on with my channel and I do more of these whipping chats that I will be talking, complaining about my job quite a bit. And I hope that that doesn't bother you guys too much. It's just anxiety, anxiety, depression, that whole thing, that, that whole part of me is a big part of me and a very large part of my anxiety and depression issues stem from my job. So, just a heads up. 
<sighs> and I think that the um, the tiredness is starting to catch up with me because that's another thing when I have an anxiety attack it takes everything out of me I mean when I started to feel it passing and I started to feel a little bit better I ran out there and was like just like a um, like a Tasmanian devil trying to get as much done as I possibly could because I knew I would eventually hit a wall and thankfully I didn't hit the wall until I got home <laughs> I was able to get through the majority of my shift after that without too much problem but um yeah it was just a bad night all around um I think I'm going to put in for vacation time at the end of May our vacation uh, time uh, god what am I trying to say we have a period where you can take your vacation and it ends this period ends at the end of this month I don't have any vacation time left but it starts up again next month and usually I try to wait before I start using my vacation time again but I think I need especially considering the fact that I'm gonna have next to no help for the for the summer my see that's the other reason that I, I almost had a panic attack a full-blown panic attack and I the re one of the reasons why I got so upset was because my boss has been putting me off and putting me off and putting me off since September. I have been asking for more help and he's been promising me that he was going to hire someone and he just never does. And this is when they start bringing all the people in for the summer and he's hiring like all these people for all these departments, but he can't seem to find anybody that he can let me use. And it's just very frustrating because I've had to deal with this for the last three summers since I've been at the store and it just gets to be too much sometimes so yeah and the fact that he obviously really didn't care one way or the other because he was getting ready to go on vacation he was getting ready to leave for Mexico the next day so what did he care about whether or not stuff in the scan department got done he would be in Mexico and by the time he came home everything would be done so yeah I'm sorry. This video has been very depressing, hasn't it? I, I apologize. I promise I'll do it like a fun tag next time. Um, okay, so complete change of topic here before we um, end things. I want to end things on a positive note. Um, so I mentioned that I'm a big reader. So what do I like to read? I mostly enjoy mysteries, thrillers, horror, that kind of thing. Although I, I tend to be very picky with horror because it takes a lot to impress me. Because I love horror movies and horror novels, but I'm much harder on horror novels than I am with movies. Movies, I can embrace um, the cheese. Embrace your cheese. I used to say that all the time when I was younger. Um, I have a great affinity for really bad cheesy movies especially horror movies like from the 80s because I have a lot of really good memories um, because of horror movies 80s horror movies when I was a kid every Friday and Saturday my mom would go play bingo this is when we lived in Florida my mom would go play bingo and me and my dad would go to the trusty video store and we would rent really bad <laughs> horror movies so we saw some doozies let me tell you um, and actually, this is a story I love to tell everybody that I meet, so I might as well tell you lovely people. So, we would rent horror movies every Friday and Saturday, and it got to the point where we were almost running out of new movies to, to rent. Um, one time we rented a movie called Faces of Death which I believe we made it five minutes in because it was basically nothing but like video and pictures of actual dead people, which you'd think the name of the movie would have been a clue as to what would be on the video. But no, I was a stupid 10 year old girl <laughs> who was running out of choices in the horror section. 
Um, and then the only time I pretty much have been desensitized to horror movies because um, I've been watching them since I was a little girl. Never gets, well, there have been a couple times that I've gotten scared and we can get more into that in a, another video. But um, the one and only time I ever was just like flat out, almost pee my pants, frightened. Um, I'm not even sure if this is the name of the actual movie or if it's just what I think it was called. I've never seen it on cable. I've never seen it anywhere else. I only saw it when we rented it. I think it was called Alone in the Dark. Something to do with dark. Because it was set during a blackout. And it was about this family who lived in this big house. And they had a little girl. And they have a blackout. And there's just so happens to be, it was either a high security prison or a mental institution. And during this blackout, these people bust out of this possibly prison, possibly mental institution. And they hide out in this family's house. And the family comes home while they're still hiding out in their house. And one of the people that escaped from this institution was this guy who was in prison or in a mental hospital for killing children. And the way he killed them, well, the way they describe it, and I have a, such a vivid memory of this, I know I can't be making it up. Or if I am, then my mind is much more twisted than I really realized. But <laughs> he was in jail because he killed children. And he tried to eat the children when he killed them. And in the movie, he is hiding under this little girl's bed. And, oh my God, I think I was the age of the girl in the movie. And you see him, like you could see his eyes under the girl's bed as they come home. And she walks into her bedroom and closes the door. And that is the last time you see that little girl in the rest of the movie. It's like she never existed. That messed me up so badly. <laughs> and it's probably the underlying cause for many of my problems. <laughs> I will never forget that as long as I live. This Just seeing him under her bed and she walks in and all you see is her feet go into her room and she closes the door. They never mention her again. And in my head, I'm like, oh my God, he's eating her. He's like physically cannibalizing this little girl that's the same age as you. Yeah, no wonder I have so many problems. But yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> books. So I like horror books. Um, I am sort of hit or, hit or miss with Stephen King. There have been some of his books that I've absolutely loved. Um, and then there's been some books that I really haven't liked. Like, unpopular opinion, I never really liked The Shining. I read it, and I saw the movie, but I read the book, and I wasn't really that impressed. I, didn't, I found it to be quite boring at times. But whereas another one of his books, 112263, 62? Yeah, 63, right? Yeah, I, I don't know, I'm tired. Um, which was about a guy who goes back in time to try and stop the Kennedy assassination. One of my favorite books ever, and the best audiobook I've ever listened to in my life. Made me cry like a baby. And not for the reason that you might think it would, but yeah. Loved that book so much. Um, yeah, so I tend to either love or not be overly impressed with his books. I used to really like Dean Koontz. I haven't read anything by him in a long time. Um, my very favorite sort of horror series is called the Newsflesh series by an author named Mira Grant. And it is a zombie series that's not really about zombies. <laughs> it's basically about how people sort of um, live in the midst of the zombie apocalypse without very many 
appearances from zombies is so fantastic. I'm not one to reread books, but I've reread that series several times, and it's it's always enjoyable every time I do. Um, yeah, so, but I have to say I have kind of stopped reading thrillers because for a while there it seemed like every book was the same. It was the same premise, kind of right, right around the time like Girl on the Train and Gone Girl and those books all came out. It all They all seemed to be about the same person, basically, about a woman who is very weak and tends to be an alcoholic <laughs> um, and an unreliable narrator and I just I don't I don't like those kinds of stories because it's it's stories like that that I find very easy to figure out and I like to read books that surprise me and those don't surprise me so I'm not really a big fan of like Gone Girl was probably the most frustrating book I've ever read because the ending just infuriated me so much. <laughs> Girl on the Train I didn't really like because I didn't like the main character at all. I actually liked the movie, but I didn't really like the book. And that's probably because I like Emily Blunt so much. Um, but my favorite book series of all time is the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, who is also my favorite author. And um, I'm actually reading one of his books right now. It's um, this one. It's called The Truth. This is the 25th book in the series. I believe there's 41 total. I'm trying to make my way through these very slowly because unfortunately he is no longer with us. And uh, I want to make the books last as long as I can. But uh, yeah, I love his, his books. They're not for everyone, but they're perfect for from my crazy sensibilities wow we are approaching an hour <laughs> um i feel like i've been babbling a lot but like i haven't really talked about anything constructive but i did warn you at the beginning that i might jump around from topic to topic because i'm tired uh, to be quite honest with you, I, t I, I can do that even when I'm not tired. <laughs> it's just the way my mind works. Um, so, since I am a new channel, do you guys have any specific questions for me that you'd like me to answer? Because um, I'm pretty much an open book, within reason. <laughs> so if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. And in my next video, I will do my best to answer them. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to bring up today. <sighs> no, I, I mentioned the Diamond Art Club thing with Jessica Rabbit. I mentioned China Mail. I think that's pretty much it. So I filled in this this section of black actually looks good. So I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're gonna leave it at that, folks. Um, yeah, I kind, I'm kind of making my way slowly towards making longer videos. Um, I somebody asked me. Um, the other day if I plan on doing live videos well number one now you have to have a thousand subscribers and it's I think it's gonna be a very long time before I get that many if I ever get that many but even if I had that many I I don't know I'm not really a huge fan of the live videos because I feel like I would be probably too nervous um, I prefer the whip and chats I have no problem like I said talking to myself because I can say, I'm not really talking to myself. I'm talking to the people out there. All the people out there watching me. Yeah. Um, but never say never, as they say. Maybe at some point I might get to the point where I feel comfortable enough to make a live. But as of right now, I don't see it happening anytime soon. 
um, which hopefully doesn't heartbreak any of you people. But anyway, yeah, I think that's about it for today. Thank you for uh, sitting and listening to me babble at you. <laughs> this, the, making these videos are, is very therapeutic, and I'm enjoying it immensely. And um, But like I said, if you have any questions, please leave me some comments. Even if you don't have any questions, leave me some comments because I really, part of the thing that I love most about having a channel is getting to interact with people um, out there in the interwebs. So <laughs> leave me some comments, introduce yourself, tell me what you're working on, tell me what you're planning on uh, working on next. And um, yeah. So don't forget to like and hopefully subscribe to my videos and hit the little bell so you'll know every time I upload another video. I have a couple more unboxing videos that I really need to upload. Uh, yeah, probably within the next few days. But anyway, I hope you all are having a fantastic week. And until next time, fellow diamond painters, I will talk with you later. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and just being all around awesome. And I will talk with you later. Toodles!